Hello and welcome, my name is Leon Street from Young Cow Limited. Today I'll be covering our training session on Magento. The main topic of discussion is orders, how to manage them. More often than not, I'm asked many, many times how do we manage our orders with our store, where do we go, and to be quite honest, when you're using Magento, a lot of the information, the things that you need to know with managing your store are quite straightforward. So, before we get into the Magento side of things, where I'll be taking you through the website, we'll be just covering some assumptions. Now, what I will assume is that you already know how to log into your own Magento store, and the second assumption is that you already have your own username and password. So on that note, what I'd like to do is jump straight into a Magento store. So if you just give me a second, we'll just switch over. So here we have a Magento store which is currently in development and so it's perfect for us to look at. We have a test product here with our logo on. So I'm just going to click on this product. And so the product loads up with the usual information, product name, description, price, picture and so on. What all, all that I'm interested in today is adding this to our cart, getting the order processed and then jumping into the administration area of Magento so I can show you how to manage your orders or where the orders are stored. So first of all, let's act as a customer. I'll add this to my cart. So we can see it's added to the cart. What I'll do is proceed to the checkout. And at this point, I've already logged in and created an account on this site, whereas your customer may register as a new customer or they may even register as a guest, depending on the settings that you have with your store and what's enabled. So we've got our billing details already set up here. We're going to ship to the same billing address, so I press continue. This automatically takes us to the shipping methods, and from here we can choose whether or not we want to have free shipping or a flat rate. For this test, we're going to use the free shipping, and we can see the only payment processor we have at the moment is check or money order. Now here, you may have things like PayPal, you may have a finance option, you may even have things like SagePay for debit and credit card processing, WorldPay, payment sense there are many types of payment processors so whatever your store normally uses will appear here for this particular training I've left it simply as a check or money order that we can process and get straight through so I'll press continue and then step five is the summary where we've got our young cow test product which is one pound free shipping and I'll place the order so this is what your customer would normally be doing when they buy a product from your Magento store So we'll just wait for this to finish refreshing and once it's submitted we should get to the success page so we'll just wait for this to process. So there you go, the order has been received and it says thank you for your purchase and so this is the information and the display that your customers will see. What it also does is give a order summary and order number here. The customer can continue shopping or they can click on the order number which will take them into their account if they have registered. So if your customer has registered, what I'd like to do is click on this order number which will take me to my account where it gives me a summary of the order. And so this is what your customer would normally see. The shipping address, shipping method chosen, the billing address and the method of payment that was chosen along with an order summary. So this pretty much acts as their invoice or their receipt if they have paid. If it's a check order or a backs payment obviously um, they'll have to wait for you to process the order on the administration side before this becomes an active receipt. But in the meantime they can print their own order if they wish to. Otherwise if we jump up to the account dashboard when a customer first logs into their account, whether you have like a My Account link or whatever it's called on your website, when they log in their dashboard, there'll be a recent order summary. So the customer can always get to any order that they've placed on your store so they can view their order or even make a reorder if they choose. So pretty much that's the order process from the front end from your customer's point of view. So what I'll do now is go to an administrator side of a Magento store. So you can see here we have a store where there's already one order, which I've done previously. And what I'll do is refresh this page and it should show my second order, which I've just done. So you can see here's my second order. And the way that I got to this orders page was simply if you log into your Magento admin, as you would normally do, 
So you'd have your domain name forward slash admin or whatever the URL is that has been set up for you. You then come to the Magento dashboard. You then need to go to sales and then orders and then click on orders. So now we are back to the orders page where I previously showed you my order and we have my order here which is the second one. So if I wish to process this order, simply click on the name or view over here. It doesn't matter. You can see the hand or the cursor changed to a hand. So that means it's all clickable. So let's click on that. So now you can see in this particular order, we have the order details at the top where it says that it was placed on the main website. We then have the account information. So it shows you the account of who it was created by the customer name. Then we have all the usual bits of information you'd expect, a billing address, shipping, the payment method chosen which was a check or money order, the shipping method chosen along with the order summary, all of the things you would expect. The one thing because this method, this particular order was paid for by check that this order is pending. So what would need to happen here is that we would need to confirm that this payment had been in fact cleared once the check had been cleared so we're going to assume that it has been cleared so what I will do is now click on invoice and so we can see that there is now a new invoice that has been created and what we need to do is simply click on email copy of the invoice and submit invoice so what this will do is send an email to the person who made the order and that will have come through to myself and so what I'll do I'll log into my email account a little later to show you what the customer receives as their order so at this point you can see that the status has now changed from pending to processing if you have payment methods like PayPal SagePay or even a finance option it may be that if all of those payments are successfully processed by the payment service provider like SagePay, WorldPay, whichever company you use or even PayPal that the payment will have successfully been received and actually instead of saying pending it may already say processing and you won't and you won't need to actually create the invoice this will have been done automatically and so the process I showed you of creating the invoice is simply if you allow check or money orders onto your website and so this step now is normally what you would see so if I jump to another client site you'll see that here we have a we have a successful order where it was processed by SagePay and you can see it contains all of the transaction summary information along with the status same processing rather than pending we can jump to another so here's another website but on this particular website you can see that this order was taken using PayPal which then contains all of the PayPal transaction information and again you can see that the status is already set to processing um, one final thing you'll find that wherever you use a payment service provider the invoice is normally created automatically so jumping back to our original one you can see there is the invoice the customer will also have a copy of this invoice in their account which they can get access to so we're now assuming that the order has come through from the customer we're the shop owner the administrator on this Magento store and here the order is then summarized ready for us to say that we are now ready to ship this order if it is a physical product and so if we are shipping this order all we simply do whether you accept the payment from PayPal, SagePay or a check or money order you simply click on ship at the top right hand corner of this so you can see I've clicked on ship it now contains all of the information for me to confirm if I wish to add any notes like a tracking number we can do so here so we put tracking number one two three this is what would be sent to the customer email a copy of the shipment add the comments to the order as well and submit shipment so what this would simply do is then complete the order so you can see the shipment has been created so now the order has changed from processing to complete the customer has been notified along the process and that completes managing your order in Magento what we can simply do is press back and this will take us back to our list of orders or we can click sales and orders but what you'll notice about this order here at the top instead of saying pending it now says complete so that's one way to process your orders in Magento 
what we now need to do is look at the final part which is what does the customer receive so if I log into my account and then I'll be right back right so what I've done I've logged into my webmail to track the order process emails that were sent to me as I've created and then taken the orders on the site so this is basically what your customer would would have done when they were placing their order on your website so you can see it says hello Leon Street it's got my name it's got the order details um, if you have uploaded your logo your logo will appear here and then it contains pretty much just a summary of my order if I go back to my inbox and then check the next email you can then see on the next email here we have a copy of the actual invoice and so you can see the customer will receive a copy of the invoice to their inbox also and then if we look at the final email which should be the shipping email notification so here we have the shipping email notification and it simply says thank you for your order on our website store and you can see your shipment has been sent and then if you look down below you'll also see the comment that I added tracking number so the comments that you add to the shipping note are also sent through via email also so pretty much that's what your customer receives and that would complete the process and obviously then your customer would await the arrival of their order via post if it is a physical pro product so let's jump back so moving on to the final part of this video covering Magento orders what we need to look at is managing returns and so the previous step was going through the customer ordering then us sending the product and send, setting the, the status as shipped so therefore we can see that this order is set as complete so if I click on order number two so we go back in it and just for hypothetical reasons the customer has called us up said that there's a problem with the product and so we need to produce a refund the way that you do that in Magento is you view the order like we're doing here which is a complete order but we need to now issue a credit memo so the first step is we click on credit memo so now you can see a new credit memo has been raised against that order you can also see at the bottom there is an option to add comments so we could say refunding because of damaged goods so you can put in there whatever comments that you would um, wish for the customer to also receive on notification of this credit memo you can also see here um, there are options for you to do refunds against shipping there's also an adjustment refund if you're only doing partial refund and an adjustment fee um, if there is an adjustment fee to go in there so what you could say is for the adjustment refund is it will be one pounds the value of what the order actually was there was no shipping charge because this was free shipping and so I'm literally just leaving it as a one pound refund and then I've also got here the option to email a copy of the credit memo to the customer and add the comments if you've used the comments box over here on the left so the final thing to do is simply click on refund offline now we'll wait for that to process and so you can see here the maximum available to refund is one pounds um, oh yeah so it's actually showing us I'd entered the adjustment refund incorrectly so just leave it as it is the grand total one pounds and we'll tick these again so by ticking the append comments and email copy of credit memo to the customer they'll get the comments and a copy of this credit memo so we refund so there we go we can see in green the credit memo has been created so now we can see instead of being complete this order has now changed status to closed and what we can then do is press back but just before we press back I'll just show you the history of this particular order so you can see the order information which was the first part when the order was placed there was an invoice that was created which is here there was a credit memo which we generated afterwards the final step there was a shipping 
memo before that but if you see this tab here on the left it actually contains a copy of also the comments history so you can see the full history of this particular order from when the order was pending invoiced processed shipped complete and then at that point there was a shipment complete and credit memo issued the order is then closed and here we end up with the final credit memo so you can see all of the transactions which at the moment there are none it was all contained within the comments history so if we go back up to the informations tab on the left we can see that completes the order in Magento so you're probably thinking well where do I do the refund of actual money that the customer paid for this if the customer paid by PayPal by SagePay whichever payment service provider you've used what you'll need to do is make sure that you log into your payment service processor dashboard each payment service processor has its own dashboard so if the customer has paid you via PayPal you'll need to log into PayPal and issue the refund via PayPal if it's SagePay, Payment Sense or WorldPay each of those payment service providers have their own dashboard which you'll need to log into and issue the refund using their dashboard so if you do have questions about that speak to your payment service provider but in a nutshell that wraps up the training for Magento and managing your orders what we'll do now is just finalize with a quick summary and summarize the first step is to manage your orders when it comes to Magento is you need to log into your Magento admin dashboard and then you simply hover over sales at the top and click on orders once you've done that you can then see a list of your orders and then you're able to click on each individual order and process them so once again Magento and managing orders there are more and other features that you can use when it comes to ordering but I think these are the basic bits of information and functionality that really you need to be aware of when it comes to Magento and getting started with orders if you've got any more questions or you wish to ask a bit more about Magento and its functionality please leave a comment underneath the video or get in touch with us once again the web address is www.youngcow.co.uk and my name is Leon Street thank you for watching goodbye